Welcome to Charting Crypto. Midweek three in December, we'll be going through a number of charts to help you figure out just what's happening in the crypto market. Now, we always like to start with the New York Stock Exchange Bitcoin Index. Some of you want to know what that's all about. Well, it is based upon U.S. dollar value of one Bitcoin based on actual transactions occurring on select Bitcoin exchanges that have been evaluated and meet the quality standards of the New York Stock Exchange. You will see that its numbers are different from things like the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Now that is intended to follow the Bitcoin price at Coindesk and it is a closed-end trust. They actually own Bitcoin. It trades at different premiums, and also it's not the same. In fact, here's what's weird, guys. GBTC, that is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, was up 2.62% when the New York Stock Exchange Bitcoin Index was down 0.11%. Now, this is what I want you to really understand and pay attention to. What really matters is what's actually going on in the marketplace. Yes, of course, the percentage changes matter a lot, particularly if it's down 0.11% for one thing and up 2.62% uh, for another. But we've we, remember, all of this stuff is still in flux. You've got multiple different Bitcoin exchanges and crypto exchanges. You've got Coinbase, Kraken, Binance, Crypto.com, all sorts of others. And they're all competing across the board. They're registering at different times. They have different numbers. I'm not saying anybody's cooking the books on some of these, but I'm telling you that when you look at these things, I, I really tend to put more emphasis on what's happening overall in Bitcoin when you look at the New York Stock Exchange Bitcoin Index. Now, you guys can convince me of some better way to do it. I will do that. In the meantime, we're going to look at that overall. And here's what's important to note. You can see four big down candles heading down on Bitcoin, all that pressure. You can see pretty much the same thing when we delve into Grayscale Bitcoin. Now, those of you who are joining us uh, for the first time, and that might be people that are listening after we release this to the public. That won't happen until next Monday. But we apply all of our rules, and I'm teaching this, of course, right now and sharing it with my Patreon members. And you guys know how we chart the markets. We're looking for weekly vertical crossovers. What are they telling us? They're telling us the direction of sentiment, fear when things are driving down like we see happening now with Bitcoin, greed when things are driving up like we have seen in the past. doesn't take a genius to look at our charts and see that they're pretty darn magical. They give you forewarning as to collapses and they also get you in at the right time when Bitcoin starts to drive up. And very important for you to know that information. Why? Because why in the world would you have been buying Bitcoin at $67,000 a Bitcoin? And again, I always add this adage in your practice account, because we're not a stock calling service, not a Bitcoin calling service, not a crypto calling service. We're an education firm. I want you to practice with us. Learn how this works. Practice, learn by doing. And why would you buy at $67,000? Let me go back to the Bitcoin index. Why would you buy at an amount like that as things are starting to die on the vine? The price is collapsing down to as low as what? $36,000. Who would like to take that loss, that shot in the head? I wouldn't. But if I'm going to look for a time to buy Bitcoin, would have been a good time. I don't know. I mean, when you look back at the uh, when the week we had the weekly vertical crossover, somewhere around the thirty-seven to forty thousand dollar mark, would that have been okay? And watch it drive up substantially over the coming weeks, that would have been fine with me. So that is what we are looking for. What do we see going on? We see lots of downward pressure continuing, regardless of whether you're looking at the Bitcoin index from the New York Stock Exchange or you're looking at what's going on with grayscale Bitcoin, you see lots of downward pressure. Not a time to be jumping into Bitcoin. We look at the two-day, uh, we can see a slowdown in the down movement, first day of this latest two-day candle. What do we see on the half-day? 
we can see where things have bottomed and rotated over. Does that mean, oh, it's going up now from now on? No, this is our smallest chart, carries the least amount of weight, but we do pay attention to it because all changes start on the smallest chart. That little, that little stop of the forward movement and the back pedaling. Uh, or the acceleration of a downfall. So we'll continue to watch and see what's going on. We understand, though, that the overall mood, no matter which of these charts we look at, is definitely and decidedly down in Bitcoin. Now, what do we see going on with Ethereum? This is Grayscale Ethereum. Again, very similar to Bitcoin. It's intended to follow the price of Ethereum based on Coindesk, uh, the Coindesk Price Index. But again, they own Ethereum. There are premiums that are involved in there. There's also a 2% management fee on these grayscale, um, uh, e well, trusts. They're not ETFs. They act like stocks and ETFs buying and selling and such, very similar, but they are closed in trusts. And they do have high fees, very high fees. So again, the nice thing is you've got lots of volatility here. And many folks aren't staying in all that long. They're buying, they're letting it ride up, getting out and such. So again, you can sure practice trade this to your heart's content. Up for the day, 7.49%. But again, what's the overall mood in Ethereum? Down. Crossed over going down back on the week ending the 3rd of December. This week is a down week. Look at the two-day. You can see where things are slowing down, but by no means has everything turned around. Now check out the half-day. You can see that even with the up movement for the day and the first green candle we've seen in quite a while, going all the way back to the 8th of December after this long multi-day hammer down, uh, even with that pounding up on Wednesday, still wasn't enough to have a crossover going up. So just keep your eye on things. We'll watch Ethereum until we see things moving around. And again, Ethereum taking off again like it did when? Back on the week ending the 13th of August. That would have been our jumping in point to then start riding this train as it proceeded through its ups and downs all the way up to a high of what? Uh, $47.40 from somewhere around the $29 to $30 mark. So again, nice movement. Now again, this is set to track Ethereum. For those of you who are actually going to be looking at practice trading with the real coins, using one of these crypto coin exchanges, again, you can use these charts to help you track those things. So it's important for you to learn how to chart so that you can then use the information as we move along. Now, we've been talking about these three new ETFs, BITO, BTF, and XBTF. These are all uh, basically Bitcoin futures ETFs, short-term futures. And of course, you can see they started in October really don't have a lot to track on them. I was, in fact, just trying to look at some of these shorter charts to see what they could tell us. We can sure see how accurate that down move was. Not a lot of accuracy in this last up move when things rotated over. I will tell you what you can look at, though, with these charts, even right now, is if you look at how much they track what's actually going on with Bitcoin. Check out the overlay there. Pretty darn similar, isn't it? Well, of course it is because it's Bitcoin futures. It's not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to follow what's happening to Bitcoin. So when those things turn around, give you some opportunities to perhaps jump in, practice trade one of those, jumping into an actual ETF, not what we would call a closed-end trust. So these are actually, you know, traded on the big exchanges. So pay attention. Uh, this one's run by ProShares, the other by Valkyrie, and the one, the low-cost leader as far as management fees goes, is the Van Eck Bitcoin strategy. So pay attention to that. Now we look at BITS. Uh, that is another, again, the, the thing that I am noticing is how much the movement of these Bitcoin-related ETFs, B, 
Mimic Bitcoin. So you can keep that in mind as these develop further, as we get more in the way of charts, because again, not been around very long, but watch for how you can utilize other information to help you follow and track what's going on with these. Now, this one is an interesting one. Bitwise, 10 Crypto Index Fund, it tracks cryptocurrencies, the top 10 cryptocurrencies, and it's weighted. So the more market, the, the, the bigger the cryptocurrencies are as far as market share, Bitcoin being the biggest, Ethereum next to that, you will see this is weighted to make up for that. And what do you see happening there? Well, even here, we see at the end of the week, looks like we have a rotation trying to go over. Thing that concerns me about that is I would much have preferred to see the rotation about the time that the derivative oscillator was going negative. It's been several weeks now uh, until that is happening don't like that. I like for things to work the way they're supposed to, like this last one did. When we had a weekly vertical crossover going up and what happened? You saw the derivative oscillator, which is our leading indicator. It is, uh, it is a triple smooth version of the relative strength index and the price percent oscillator, which is a percentage version of the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence indicator, which is a lagging indicator, when those cross at the same time, we typically feel better because they tend to have more staying power, more inertia, more likelihood of moving in the direction of the crossover, which is all we ask for, friends. We just want to know which way it's going. It is that simple in our world and at the same time that complicated. BITO, again, this is an innovator. Uh, just getting started, really don't have much at all to be able to follow. You know, you again can look back and track and see what Bitcoin is doing as compared to what this fund is doing, how closely they are mimicking and tracking things. Again, important to pay attention to. What about uh, this next fund? This is uh, in investments in blockchain technology. Again, what do you see with an overlay of what's happening with Bitcoin itself? When you see the market being driven up and down hard, and that's what we always want to have. We want to have that volatility in one direction or another. It helps you sort of see things and where they might be going. But again, all we have in these new funds are very short time periods. We need weekly vertical crossovers and we will get them in the future as things move along and these new funds develop. So we'll be patient in the meantime as we go through these. You know, we're not going to get overhyped and over-concerned about things. We're also pushing the folks at TC2000 to please help us start tracking directly, whether it's at Coindesk or somewhere else. Go ahead and get us the information loaded here on TC2000 so we can apply our charts our charts and start tracking other cryptocurrencies. But we see what's going on. Let's see, Bill, okay. Uh, we can see that we had a crossover. Let's see here. Yes, we had a nice crossover going down back on the week ending the 10th. Uh, and again, that is proceeding. Uh, that is, uh, again, a, another ETF that's invested in transformational data sharing. A large uh, component of that is in the crypto space, in the transactional crypto space. And uh, also with the uh, next generation economy, again, big crypto investments. Look at that nice clean crossover going down. We've seen that continue. Uh, and again... What do we see here on this last fund that we look at? The innovative transaction and processing. Again, with cryptocurrencies, we can see that that also did crossover going down. Again, giving us an opportunity potentially to at least know not to be in there if we're not going ahead and getting into a short position. So, as this market space continues to develop, we'll have a lot of fun things to look at. In the meantime, we can, to our heart's content, 
follow very accurately what's going on with Ethereum, what's going on with Bitcoin, and having an idea how these markets are developing and where they're going. That's where we are, folks, right now. The crypto space still quite negative. Not recommending that any of you jump into any up trades at this point. We will just continue to see where things are going and then be ready to pounce when the pouncing's good. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team here at chartingwealth.com. We're happy to bring you Charting Crypto.